Hello, my name is Jaap Christensen and I am a developer at Sitecore. For this demo, I thought it could be interesting to try and import a jQuery widget into Speak to see how that is done. And for that, I have found this particular widget, which I actually think is kind of cool. It's a knob and it has a lot of, of um, functionality. Uh, and it's actually a good demo because it's not completely trivial to, uh, to import this into Speak. So uh, let's try this. First of all, I'll go into Visual Studio and I'll create a, a new folder to hold this um, this new one. We'll call it Knobs, and I will paste the JavaScript for this one into it. And there are probably other ways of doing this, but this is just so like the easiest way to do it. Um, so in here, I'll create a new <clears throat> a new JavaScript file. I'll call this jQuery uh, knob.js. I'll paste that into it. So now we got the code. And then let's create a new uh, speak component. We'll call this knob. And it's just loading. And we'll put that into the page settings. Um, first thing we want to do is to actually make sure that the uh, uh, knob is actually loaded, and we can do this by using require.js, and we'll do like this, v1 jQuery, actually we just need to have that one in there, jQuery knob.js. So now it's getting loaded. If we look at the chhtml, we need to make sure that it's the right tag. And if we look at at the samples for this one, we can see that it's a an input. So we'll do the same in our chhtml. Change this one like that, and let's set up the set. HTML text writer. Dot. Nope. That's not it. It's the type. I'll set that to text. And let us set in a a value. So we'll set the data sc value and we'll set that to 50. So that's the chhtml. If we look at the, um, the, the knob JS file, first thing we want to do is we want to instantiate the, uh, the knob um, on this element. And this is just standard jQuery. Um, Let's see, what are we missing? We miss... Now actually what we want to do in this one is probably more of something like setting the value of it because it's an input field. So set the value and we'll set it to 50. Um, let's do the sidecore stuff. So we should have a knob here. And the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, create the um, um, parameters template. We'll have the knob parameters. And we want to set the base template for that as usual. Control base. Like that. Could have chosen the input base for this one. That would probably actually have been better. Now in this one we want to set up the parameters template. Let's see if we can find that. That's right here. And now we are good to go. So that should be all of it. Let's hope it works. So we'll add that to the let's see here. Let's just set up the uh, like that. Okay, let's go and see if it works. 
Where's the 50? And there we go. So that's good. So we got the knob loaded and it's actually working as well. Next up, let's try to do an input field that will set the value of this knob. So we'll add a text box. And this will allow the user to type in a value that will get reflected into the knob. Now to do that, we have to set up a, uh, a values parameter for the knob. It's like that. So that we are able to data bind to this. And let's go into the um, um, the rendering here, and we'll do the rendering get integer, and we'll do the value and to support data binding, we'll just do it like that. And let's make sure that we got the data binding working as well. So we will we will set up data bind, and we'll say the value is picked up from the value here. Okay. In the knob.js, let's declare the, the value property, set that to zero. And for here, we'll initialize it from the um, value parameter of the input field. Now, the knob is a little bit uh, tricky because it actually requires you to fire a trigger event whenever uh, you want to update the knob when the value changes. So we have to do, um, actually we need to have, this should be the model. Model on change value. We'll do the trigger change. And we will have the trigger change as a function. And this will do yield trigger change. Okay, so whenever the value changes, we'll do a trigger change so that the novel will uh, redraw itself. And in the CSHTML, we are setting the value from the values parameter that we that we get from the rendering, and we'll data bind that to the input field's value attribute. Okay, so let's just go into the list page again and make sure that we have data bound the value to the text box value text like that. So that's the data binding. Okay, interesting. Let's see if this is working. We've got zero here, so if we do 20, it actually updates like that. So that should be working. So now let's try to read the value from the knob. And to do that, we will add a text field. And we'll data bind this text field to the value of the knob, like that. Now. Unfortunately, um, the knob is a little bit um, special when it when it comes to this. So what it actually need is an, is an additional parameter in its, uh, initializer. So whenever this changes, we will call the this change like that, and we'll declare the change here. This is a function which takes the v. This is the new value. And we'll do the model set value. So this gets called back whenever the uh, knob redraws itself. Here we go. Let's see, we put in 50. We get a 50 over here. 70. Still updating. Now let's do this. You can see that it actually updates. So we have imported a, a new jQuery widget, the knob, into Speak. And we did that by creating a new component, which has basic values, transporting values from the rendering parameters into this uh, HTML, which get picked up by the JS. And we handled the uh, changes from the knob. This one would fire the, the the trigger so that the knob would redraw itself 
and this change one would update the value in our view model for this component so that we can actually data bind to it. That's it.